गाइस सो टुडे वी गोइंग टू बी डिस्कसिंग लीड कोड क्वेश्चन 303 रेंज सम क्वेरी इम्यूटेबल सो द क्वेश्चन इज गिवन एन इंटीजर एरे इन नम्स हैंडल मल्टीपल क्वेरीज ऑफ द फॉलोइंग टाइप कैलकुलेट द सम ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ नम्स बिटवीन इंडिसेस लेफ्ट एंड राइट इंक्लूसिव वेयर लेफ्ट इज लेस देन इक्वल टू राइट सो द क्वेश्चन इज बेसिकली इफ यू आर गिवन एन एरे and two indices you have to just calculate the elements that are in between those indices the sum of those so how can we do ab- go about this so let's say we have a nums array let's say something like this 0 -3 -5 2 -1 -1 and these are the indexes so the first and foremost is whenever a query is given like calculate the sum of the this range we can just directly calculate the sum so what would be the algorithm for that for that approach the algorithm would be let's say we have a sum variable which we initialize it to 0 we have the start and the end indices as suggested in the question or you can say left or right i'll just write it uh start left end equals to right so what is the algorithm for that whatever the sum are in between these ele- whatever the elements are in between this range start and end just add them up so So this is the algorithm. So let's say in our first scenario, case one. So the query is to calculate sum between start is equals to zero and end equals to two. So basically, from the beginning, calculate the end till the second element of the array. So what is the array? This is the array, right? So what would be the sum for that? The sum would be. we start from the zeroth index what is the element there minus 2 we add the next element at index 1 that is 0 and then the next element at index 2 which is this so this gives us a sum sorry uh this is positive 3 so this would be this should give us 1 so let's say we have another query case 2 the query is the start should be 2 and the end should be 5 so start from index 2 calculate sum till index 5 so what would be the sum in that case it would be start from the zeroth index so 0 start from the second index so that is essentially 3 plus minus 5 then the next index element 2 plus minus 1 so this would be minus 1 yes so this is our sum for this query now imagine if there are such n queries let's say we have total we have a total of m queries and m can be greater than n less than n or comparable to n so what would be the time complexity of this approach since we're going over the array which contains of n elements and we're calculating the queries m times I always doing the sum again and again. So the complexity of that would be n into m. So this is the complexity of this approach. Can we make it better? Can we do it in o of n time? Instead of having to calculate sum every single time, can we just like calculate the sum once and use that information for every query answer? So this is where dynamic programming comes into picture. So this is the second approach that we're going to discuss, which is calculate consecutive consecutive sum dynamic programming so how do we do this let's say this is the uh, just a moment let's say this is the array that we have nums minus 2 0 3 -5 2 -1 
and the respective indices for that 0 1 2 3 4 5 what would the sum dp look like if we calculate the sum consecutive sum of every element and store at it respective indexes so the sum dp the where we store our sum is going to look like the first would be just itself then this index essentially means nums 0 plus nums 1 basically till this index from the starting what is the sum of all the elements so this would be I'll just make this a bit bigger so that's easy to understand just a moment zero one two three four five so this would be minus two this would be minus two plus zero equals to minus two this would be minus two plus zero plus three this would be equal to one this would be minus two plus zero plus three or whatever we had computed earlier so basically this because this holds the sum of whatever elements we had earlier right this plus just the new element at this index third index which is minus 5 so this gives us minus 4 minus 4 plus whatever the fourth element is that is 2 this gives us minus 2 and then we have minus 2 plus minus 1 so this gives us minus 3 so this is how our sum element sum dp array would look like in the end okay so now that we've calculated the consecutive sum how about we use this information for every query that we get ahead so let's say we have a query so let's say we get a query query number one query one what is that start is equals to zero end equals to two since start is equals to zero and end equals to two this means calculate the sum from the beginning till index 2 so I think so what does that mean consecutive sum from beginning till end right where are we storing this information we're storing this information at sum dp the end index because this essentially means this is where we're storing right because this essentially means in this case it would be two that sum dp consists of all the elements before it added together and stored at that index so this is how we solve the query first query now let's say we have another query let's say the query second query let's say the second query is start is equals to 2 and end equals to 5 so instead of calculating the sum again how can we use the sum dp array that we computed above to get this information so notice that sum dp end in this case the end would be 5 what is that that is nums 0 plus nums 1 plus nums 2 nums 3 plus nums 4 plus nums 5 this is essentially what we mean by sum dp at index 5 what do we want before that what is sum dp start start is in this case 2 right so what is the sum till index 2 how do we represent that so num 0 plus nums 1 plus nums 2 right okay what do we want we want the sum of the 
elements at indexes 2 till indexes 5 right so how can we represent that nums 2 plus nums 3 plus nums 4 plus nums 5 so this is what we want so how can we use this information and this information some dp end and some dp start to get what we want so notice that some dp start minus one in this case would be nums zero plus nums one right so if we compute some dp end minus some dp start minus one if we use these two informations what do we essentially get so notice that in these equations some dp end is here and some dp start minus one is this so nums one get cancelled num zero get cancelled so initial so in the end we're left with nums two plus nums three plus nums four plus nums five which is exactly what we want what we want so what is the approach for this sum dp n minus sum dp start minus one this would give us a required answer why are we doing some start minus one some dp start minus one because we want to include the element at the start index and therefore we're subtracting whatever we had computed before that so that is why we're doing some start minus one so having discussed the approach and we having it verified over here what is the heart of the algorithm in a dp case wherever you're working with dynamic programming it's always a good uh, practice to write a heart of the algorithm this makes it easier for the person in front to understand how the dp is actually working so there are three parts of heart of algorithm so what is the verbal description of sub problems so every sub problem is basically calculating the consecutive sum right so this is how you can divide it sum of array elements s is the dp array from index 0 to index equals to k next step is to explain the recurrence what is the recurrence that you're going to be using mathematic recurrence so the base case for the base cases it would be we'll be starting from the first element right so some of the first element would be itself so that is our base case what is our general case so that would be sum of let's say the element at kth index would be the element at that index added to whatever has been computed before so this would be our general recurrence and where is the solution found where is the solution found So if your question is to sum of, sorry, uh, if your, if start is equal to zero, basically you have to calculate the sum from the start. So in that case, the answer would directly be S of end. 
right because we need to calculate from the start till the end and this contains that information but if your start is not equal to zero it's greater than zero so in that case the answer would be just what we described above s of n sum from the start to the end minus the sum from the start to start minus one again why are we including start minus one the reason behind including start minus uh, subtracting from start minus one is because we want the start element at the start index to be in our answer and start minus one will suggest the sum of all the elements before the start index so this will give us our required answer so this is the recurrence for that and this is the complete heart of the algorithm for the code for this solution you can visit the re github repository that i have attached in the link below i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope this video helped you clear your doubts if you have any questions or concerns fee please feel free to reach out to me in the comment section below thank you for watching this video have a nice day